In this video, we'll demonstrate how to use Bootstrap's grid with all its bells and whistles in a Blazor.NET 8 application. We'll also show the slight differences between using Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly when using the grid. We'll create a new Blazor web app. Although we'll be using WebAssembly for this demo, in the additional information dialog, you could select Server for the interactivity mode and set the interactivity location to per page or component. The Bootstrap grid component is interactive, so you'll need to set the render mode on the page that uses the grid, but we'll show where to set this when we get to the code. For this demo though, we want to use WebAssembly to demonstrate the slight difference in setting up Bootstrap. Once the app is created, the Solution Explorer will show the main project files in the top part and the client subproject in the bottom part with all the client-side pages. It's also important to note that the starting page, or what is similar to the index.html file, is the app.razor file in the top main project files. For the instructions on how to set up Bootstrap in your app, go to docs.blazor-bootstrap.com. Then select Getting Started and the type of web app you're using. For the most part, the setup is pretty much the same for all the project types. We'll use the appropriate instructions for our WebAssembly project. First, we'll install the blazor.bootstrap NuGet package. It's important that you install this on the client project where the Bootstrap components will be used. Next, the instructions tell us to add the references to the index.html file. Of course, that no longer exists. We need to use the app.razor file in the main project files. Go to the app.razor file, and for convenience, we'll paste the CSS references just after the existing Bootstrap link. Copy the script references and paste them in the body section of the same app.razor file. Now we can delete the Bootstrap folder in the root folder, and the old Bootstrap link in the app razor file. Then we register the service in the client projects program.cs file. and add a bootstrap using statement to the client's import file. With bootstrap installed, let's add a page where we can use the grid component. Before we get into the code for the grid component, we'll first set up a menu link to our new page. In the nav menu razor page in the layout folder, copy an existing link and point it to the new page. If you like, you can also change the icons to any of the bootstrap icons. If you do change the icons, you'll need to make some adjustments to their layout in the nav menu CSS files BI class. Let's look at the code for the Bootstrap grid. If you're using a Blazor server project, you will need to set the render mode to interactive server. Since we're using a WebAssembly project, this is not required. We add a Bootstrap grid with the grid element, and the first attribute is the T item. This is the name of your model class. 
Here we simply added the class into the code section, but of course the convention is to add your model classes to a models folder and add a reference to them. The next attribute in the grid is some class formatting. Then the most important attribute is the data provider. This takes the name of the method that the grid uses to get the data for the grid. This method is very specific to the bootstrap grid and it uses bootstrap types in its signature. Inside the method, you can set up or retrieve the data for the grid. Here, we simply used a method to set up a list of items. For WebAssembly or client-side projects, the grid will only set up this data once and use that data set for sorting and filtering, etc. It should be noted here that if you intend to use very large data sets in your grid that require sorting and filtering, it's recommended that you use server pages with interactive server rendering. This is simply because the server is much faster in sorting and filtering large data sets. This page at demos.blazerbootstrap.com demonstrates server-side sorting. Notice the sort string attribute on the columns. When sorting is clicked, the grid will call the method to retrieve the data again using the sort string. But back in our WebAssembly project, we don't need to worry about such things with our modest data set. The grid will sort and filter the data client side. The return line in our data provider method applies the retrieved data to the grid. The next attributes in our grid are just settings that enable filtering, paging, the number of items per page, sorting, and selection. When the selected items change, you can call another method. The bootstrap grid requires this method to take a hash set collection. In this demo, we use this hash set to display the names of the selected items. Finally, with all that out of the way, we can set up the columns of the grid. The columns take a model name, header text, a property name, and a sort key selector if you want to be able to sort the column. The context field is what will be displayed in the column. When we run the app, our link takes us to the grid. Column sorting works. Filtering works. The pagination works. And the grid is responding to selections. Thank you for watching our video. For more tutorials on C Sharp, hit subscribe and click the reminder. Give us a like so the video can be visible to more people.